So people are worried about AI taking their jobs, especially software developers. I mean, there's the invention of Devin that is supposedly able to do all these things that developers can do. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I think that's a long way off. In, in my last episode slash podcast, I talked about the fact that infrastructure, I, I don't think is going to be able to handle everybody onboarding with artificial intelligence into their day-to-day -day lives as quickly as you know the capabilities like the capabilities are going to be there gpt5 is in the near term elon musk is talking about that artificial intelligence by the end of next year is going to be smarter than every human on the planet yeah sure and in small pockets people are going to see their jobs get eroded or consolidated just like i talked about in the last episode but technology taking jobs isn't anything new I mean, it's been around since human existence. Something is invented, replaces, but also creates jobs. And if, like an example, the printing press came about and there for centuries, there were scribes, people with the ability to tell stories, to write, and all of a sudden something comes along, you can do it much faster, much more clear, much better, and disseminate information in a faster way. So it replaced scribes, but it created the jobs of journalisms, authors, poets, and everything else that were able to create that they otherwise weren't because it was not, you know, feasible to get a lot of information out quickly and to the scale that the printing press could do. And besides technology outsourcing, as, you know, aircraft and better cargo ships have come into our lives the ability to make the world smaller for people like companies here in the united states to get cheaper labor overseas and like these the BRICS countries the third world countries the jobs that were here domestically were replaced overseas but what came about people that were experts in supply chain and just a whole bevy of other jobs that people could just pivot to where they were otherwise doing more of the manual labor, the assembly that is now overseas. So replacement of jobs, evolution of the economy. Again, this isn't anything new. Now, maybe it's a little different in terms of the level, the pay of the, the caliber of jobs versus outsourcing and the ones that we perhaps saw during the Industrial Revolution. That is potentially an issue but we don't know yet what jobs are going to be created but if i were to look in present times and how it applies there, there's a very very cool graph that i was exposed to during like in my um, artificial intelligence program where i'm learning to create models myself now the reason i'm back in school is because it's a very interesting technology and i like to understand the underlying why how things work so i can then make better decisions about my future so the most interesting thing that I want to share with you is what this graph looks like. So it, it, it's an overlapping Venn diagram, and uh, we're going to go ahead and draw it as we are talking. So uh, let me grab the uh, circle here. And in the f there's there's these three bubbles. Um, no outline. Oh, no, we want a thick outline, actually. We don't want to fill. So... We've got these three aspects and people within the world of data science, I'm sure has, have already seen this and I already know where I'm going. Um, look for a text box here and, and apologies if you're listening, I'll, I'll be able to talk through it. So what we have here is like a trinity of circles. They're all overlapping in the image of a Venn diagram. So two of the circles each have an overlapping and all three kind of overlap. This is what we're going to talk about in the world of artificial intelligence. So in this bubble here, we have computer science and technology. And then over here, we have math and statistics. And this is everything that's making up all the different parts of artificial intelligence. Because right here, as we overlap here, we're going to see machine learning, machine and uh, deep learning. And we want to decrease the size of that so we can see it better. All right, and that's where we're at. This machine learning and deep learning, we got people or things that can generate in the world of computer science technology and develop the math and statistics to create the machine and deep learning. In the middle, we have this world 
of data science. Now, if you're not in any realm so far, don't worry. You're, you're gonna find your way and it's gonna be the most important aspect, I believe, of how people protect themselves against the impending you know, influx and implementation of artificial intelligence in everybody's day-to-day -day lives. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna first uh, fill out the overlapping here, uh, software development. Uh, but even here, I would probably even put, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, and then the last aspect of it is going to be all the research done. Now we get to where a majority, I believe the population lives and that is down in this bubble. And this is where you survive domain and business knowledge. I mean, it's not enough. Yeah, we're going to have these artificial intelligence models that have the ability to be more intelligent and how you define intelligence in terms of arriving at right logical answers more so than the average human. Sure. But how are these things going to be built? Who's going to manage them? Who's going to do the check on them? It's the people with the domain and business knowledge with whatever industry or sub industry that you're in that's going to be able to keep oversight in each aspect of these different bubbles. There's gotta be some sort of aspect. And the thing about artificial intelligence is it's based on historicals, uses probabilities, statistics, all the math right here to develop and generate outputs to be used in the future. The issue that people are worried about is that if there's nobody down here in this domain and business knowledge bubble, and let's highlight it, to create, to innovate, and yes, Artificial intelligence models can generate, but again, it's generations based on prior, you know, uh, data sets that it's aggregating to generate the output. So everything's, in general, creativity is derivative, but the innovation is really going to missing because having just artificial intelligence models feed information they created back into itself is a dangerous thing where it can start to hallucinate, start to data drift and start developing things that all of a sudden be, don't become useful. And you, you get in this weird limbo of now, if people don't find these the, this technology useful because it's generating invaluable information, then they're no, gonna, no longer gonna use it. But we're gonna be in a position where we're gonna be used to using it in our day-to-day -day lives. So we have to have people with domain and with the business knowledge to help drive and continue innovation. And what new jobs come about from that is going to be interesting. Now we can go here and uh, change software development because this is specific within the realm of uh, data science and you know, process developments between computer science technology and business um, product developments. Uh, research can stay there, but there's just going to be so much more between this overlap with machine and deep learning that is going to be very interesting. I, I can't even imagine because I couldn't before when, with all the different technology that's been implemented, what jobs could potentially be created and pivoted as a result of artificial intelligence. So for me, understanding it, you know, the, the machine, the deep learning, the math, t math and statistics and the computer science technology, I believe it's going to make me, and again, this is all hypothesis. We could be talking a year from now and, you know, my ass is on the street, but, uh, you know, with my background in biochemistry, within law, within business, and now uh, being back in school for artificial intelligence, I'm trying to arm myself and make myself more useful in terms of understanding every aspect of this trinity of circles so I can be most effective at my job and utilizing this new machine deep learning technology that way. You know, we're just not fully just trusting things. We're validating. We are, you know, kind of supervising, managing, you know, AI manager. Maybe that's a new job. I, I don't know. But this is how we protect ourselves down here. It's this domain and business knowledge aspect. The smarter you can be about your job and just get really ingrained in there, I think the more protected you're going to be from any worries about artificial intelligence taking your job.